Hello, sixth grade. This is Mrs. Hampton. Welcome to another lesson in science. Today, we will be looking at topic seven, lesson two, minerals. Think about a time when you have heard of the word minerals. Do any of these statements come to mind? A, minerals are ingredients in a healthy diet. B, minerals are materials they are mined from inside the earth. C. Minerals are sometimes cut and polished to make precious gems. D. Minerals are used as building materials. If you checked any of the statements or all the statements, you would be correct. A mineral is a naturally occurring solid that can be formed by inorganic processes and that has a crystal structure and a defined chemical composition. Now, wow, that is quite a definition. Let's break this definition apart. First, minerals formed by a natural process that occurs in nature Solids that are made in a chemistry lab don't count as minerals. Second, since minerals are a solid, minerals have a definite volume and a definite shape. Three, minerals form by an inorganic process. That means that they can form from materials that were not part of living things. For example, one way that minerals forms is when lava or magma cools and hardens to form crystals. An example of cooled crystals is the creation of amethyst. Fourth, the particles in a mineral are in a pattern that repeats over and over, which forms a crystal, such as those in sugar and salt. And fifth, a mineral has a definite chemical composition, which means minerals always contain the same elements. Minerals found in the Earth's crust include salt, coal, iron, and diamonds, just to name a few. But minerals are found in and around your home as well. Let's look at this fireplace. Here are a few minerals that are found in the fireplace. A mirror also has minerals. A bathtub or a shower has these minerals. So as you can see, minerals are all around us. There are more than 5,000 minerals, so telling them apart can be challenging. Each mineral has a characteristic property that are used to identify and describe it. Some of the properties used to identify minerals are luster, which is a term used to describe how light reflects from a mineral surface. Streak refers to the color of the mineral's powder. Hardness is a scale that ranks minerals from the softest being one to the hardest being 10. Let's watch a brain pop video that tells ways to identify minerals. That's not a gold nugget. Dear Tim and Moby, 
How can you tell one mineral from another? From Rachel. Minerals have physical properties that let you tell them apart. There he is. I can pick Bovi out of a crowd because he has certain physical traits that make him different from everybody else. For one thing, he's orange and he's got that lost look on his face. Bring me a piece of quartz, Moby. Well, Moby, color is usually the first indication of what type of mineral you're dealing with. Quartz crystals are milky white like these, but they look a lot like calcite, and some of that is in there too. Moby needs to look at some other mineral properties. Ow! Hardness measures how easily a mineral can be scratched. You can scratch graphite with your fingernail, but it's extremely difficult to scratch a diamond. The mystery mineral scratched my fingernail all right, but my fingernail only registers in at 2.5 on the Mohs scale. The Mohs scale is a table that ranks the hardness of minerals. Calcite measures 3, and quartz is 7, so let's see what this steel file, which is a 6.5, does. Quartz scratches steel. Calcite doesn't. This is looking like a piece of quartz so far. Let's check out its luster. Luster tells you how light reflects off of a mineral surface. Minerals like pyrite and gold have a metallic luster. They're really shiny. Our mineral is kind of pearly looking. Streak is the mineral's color when it's powdered. Lots of minerals can be easily identified using the streak test. Hmm, it's pretty hard to see much there. Minerals that break along a smooth, flat surface have cleavage. Minerals that break like ours did, with rough, jagged edges, have fracture. Quartz is a mineral with fracture, so I'm about 99% sure that's what we're dealing with. But there are always a few more tests to perform. That settles it. Calcite would fizz when hydrochloric acid touched it. Yeah, I like identifying minerals too. So start a rock collection. Maybe you shouldn't be keeping these in the living room. I hope you learned a little bit about minerals. See if you can list objects in and around your home made using minerals. List the object and the mineral. How many can you name? As I looked around my home, I found a pencil made of graphite, a driveway with shell and limestone, and my window made of silica. Let's watch a short video on minerals. What do you think of when I say gold, silver, and diamonds? Maybe you imagine a treasure chest brimming with riches. Or perhaps it brings to mind a queen sitting on her throne wearing a, a jewel-encrusted crown. Throughout history, people have risked their lives to obtain these precious minerals. Today, gold, silver, and diamonds are not only valuable, but are also important components of the technologies people use every single day. But just how are these minerals obtained? Gold is a soft metal that is easy to shape into different forms. It conducts electricity well and does not tarnish easily. It's one of the most useful metals we know of and can be found in everything from cell phones to telescopes. But gold mining can destroy the landscape. The primary way to mine gold is through a process called surface mining. In surface mining, the soil and rock covering the gold are removed or blasted away. The impact of extracting gold from the ground can speed up erosion. Chemicals used when processing gold, like cyanide, can contaminate the ground and water, which can kill plants and animals and decrease the biodiversity of the area. Silver is another useful metal that can be found everywhere from inside your microwave to the silverware on the table at a holiday meal. It is so soft, it often needs to be combined with other metals. The process for mining silver is similar to gold and can also alter the landscape and ecosystem. Diamonds are found in everything from wedding rings to the tips of industrial drills. Their beauty and hardness make them highly valuable. Diamonds form deep underground. Sometimes, they have been carried up towards Earth's surface by magma. This magma then cooled into pipe-like formations with the diamonds inside. So mining diamonds can require digging deep holes into Earth's surface to get at these pipes. Mining diamonds can also alter landscapes. 
many of the countries where diamond mining takes place don't have enough environmental regulations in place to prevent the damage that can occur. All of the precious materials we mine come at a cost, but new regulations and environmental awareness can prevent or reduce the impact of mining on the environment. Can you think of other natural resources that are important to our lives? And what type of environmental impact does taking these natural resources from Earth 